Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I will be reviewing this 2007 Honda Pilot. I'll tell you the good, I'll tell you the bad. Hey, it's mostly good. There is one major complaint that I do have that I'll tell you at the end of the video, but let's dive into it. So if you're watching this video, I'm assuming that maybe you're in the market trying to buy one of these things, figure out if it's a good vehicle. If you can find one that's used like this, again, 2007 um, is this one right here and maybe you're buying it for like son, daughter, something like that, they're gonna be a first time driver, or maybe it's for yourself and you're going to um, look for a good, strong used vehicle. Hey, I think this is it, this is a great one. So this is a 2007 Honda Pilot. This is the two wheel drive. This is the kind of medium level of the interiors that they had. We did opt up and get the faux, le uh, faux leather, which it's kind of a plasticky leather, right? It's not like nice leather. But um, if you were in the market, I don't have a major complaint about the leather other than it's not real but it, and not quite as comfortable. However, if you can find them that are in the cloth seats, I found those to actually be more comfortable, so don't shy away from that. And there are some of the features that it came with, and you can see right there, there's our mileage. So 184,000 miles in that ballpark, and I'll tell you, it did flawless until the very end. I'll tell you what happened to this vehicle recently but this vehicle has been an absolute dynamite vehicle for us. As far as the engine goes, this is a six cylinder. It's the only one that Honda offered. When you buy a Honda, they don't give you a whole tremendous amount of options, but when you buy them, it kind of makes it nice and easy. It's very simple purchasing procedure. And this six cylinder engine is very strong, plenty to pull this thing around. Another thing I really liked about this vehicle is it's pretty easy to work on. So I did my own oil changes, also transmi transmission fluid. You know, when you get a vehicle like this one right here, the transmission fluid dropping out that fluid and then replacing it and then checking it with a dipstick. Yep, a dipstick. I know it's unusual in today's cars, but you can check the transmission fluid very similar to how you check like the oil level. And that made it so easy to change the transmission fluid. So that was really nice. And uh, again, two wheel drive, but we never really had a problem with that at all. I kind of wanted to get the four wheel drive, but the two wheel drive worked great for us. Here we are towing a pop-up tent trailer and that's most of the towing we did was pretty lightweight. The vehicle did pretty well at towing smaller things like that. So here's a front shot of the vehicle and you can see it's still in fantastic shape. Now, if you're shopping for one of these, or maybe you have one of these and you're kind of seeing how it's going to age, here's my strong recommendation. You, I don't know if you need to wax the entire vehicle, but what I did is I would look at other people's vehicles that were a little bit older of the same make and model, and I noticed that they were fading away and the paint was starting to fade right above the windshield and then also coming down those um, sort of pillars down towards the hood. The hood would fade a little bit and then also the top of the side panels, those front quarter panels or whatever they're called, would fade. So I would wax that just about two or three times a year in just those little spots. And then once a year or so, I'd wax the entire vehicle. But sorry, I'm too lazy to do it on a regular basis. But by doing that, this 2007 in 2021 had no paint fade whatsoever, which is a little bit unusual. Usually, um, if you live in a sunny state, you'll see the fade a little bit. So again, medium size SUV, I think they call it like a medium large. We also own a Toyota Sequoia and it's the Sequoia is enormous compared to this. Now this worked fine for our family of five as our kids were growing and getting bigger. It did start to feel a little bit small, especially when we we're throwing the dog in there or something like that, then it would really, really get small. And again, you can see that that area right above the windshield still looking pretty good. I know the sun's kind of hitting it weird right there. But anyway, worked fantastic for that. We would put luggage and all kinds of different paddle boards and go to the lake type stuff up on top of the vehicle. Worked fantastic for that as well. This one has the moon roof, sunroof, and no leaks. That worked perfect. We also opted for the tow package on this and we got it from the factory, which if you're, if you're shopping for a used one and you find that, boy, that is a nice little thing to have there. Came with a transmission cooler and some other goodies under the hood. And then of course, you know, the, the rear end of the tow package here. And that was, that was really helpful for us. So I'm glad we did that. And of course you can do that aftermarket too, but if you're buying one used and it happens to have that, especially if it's from the factory, um, hey, that, that's a pretty big bonus there. As far as towing capacities go, I can't remember the exact weight, but I can tell you that when we towed things that were sort of medium heavy, still under the limits, 
it, you could feel it. It was kind of herky-jerky in the vehicle. And otherwise, when we weren't towing, the vehicle felt so strong. It's one of those vehicles that kind of feels like it, it's, it's a heavy vehicle. And it felt and drove that way in, in a good way. You didn't feel like you were in a little tin box. One of our friends has uh, another Honda, which is the smaller SUV. Gosh, I can't remember exactly which one it is, but it just felt like you were in a tin can, kind of. I felt like kind of uncomfortable, like if we were going to get into crash, it was going to be bad news. The Pilot doesn't feel that way. It feels like a strong, semi-heavy, firm driving vehicle, and uh, I thought it did great with that. You can see the interior here still in fantastic shape all the way through the years. That radio headset worked fantastic, flawlessly. Six-disc changer, which I'm shocked, but still works to this day. It works just fine air conditioning, all those kind of things that are kind of the reason you buy a Honda, right? So that those still work when the vehicle is 10, 15 years old. And I have seen some people update that headset right there and get something that has like Bluetooth. This in a 2007 does not have those kind of things. So you could consider doing that for us. Uh, we, we just haven't made that move quite yet. Now I did add on to this radio, um, there's an exterior uh, connection so I could connect my phone and play music from my phone on it and that worked really well. Actually, I'll put a link down in the description to that if you want to check that out. And kind of looking at these seats, the seats are, you know, they're medium comfortable. On some of the longer road trips, we felt like the seats were a little bit uncomfortable. Again, that leather is a little bit plasticky feeling. Hey, here's the middle seat. You can see I took the headrests off because Normally we'd have car seats back here. Of course, you gotta have those headrests on at all times for safety reasons, but we took them off with the child seats. The middle seat is pretty big. We had three car seats, two car seats and a booster seat back here all at one time. And we had the Brightex car seats, which are pretty large if you know them. So that was never a problem at all. There's the third row seats. The third row seats is pretty small. So for our, um, 11, 12 year old kiddo, that worked just fine for him and his friends. But as an adult going back there, it felt pretty cramped so that the floor is kind of high. So your knees sit high and you're kind of like rolled up in a ball almost back there. But, um, but again, it, having that third row option when you need it was really nice. So here's the driver's seat. This did finally get a little bit of a tear in that seat. And I say finally only because I'm a pretty big guy, I'm pretty rough getting in and out of there with blue jeans and all that kind of stuff. And it did break just a tiny little bit. I was able to mend it and kind of fix it and it seemed like it was doing pretty good. All right, now my friends, I will show you the flaw. Are you ready? So what you're looking at right now is I, the vehicle had died and it pulled up this code right here, P0340. And I'm just kind of showing that one like, oh, this is me trying to diagnose it. And here's what the actual problem was. That in, in something that Honda, boy, if you ever see this video, please listen. You have an interference engine here. And now we have a timing belt instead of a timing chain. My opinion is that is the perfect storm for an engine. We are just waiting for catastrophic damage. So how can you avoid that? You can see right here, here's the timing belt covers that I took off to check. And of course, yep, that's what it was, the timing belt. So this vehicle, again, has a timing belt and an interference engine. If you're gonna have an interference engine, I strongly recommend trying to find a vehicle that has a timing chain instead of the belt. You think about Toyota, that's what they've done with a lot of their engines. And I, honestly, I think that's why they're winning the reliability battle over Honda. But on this one here, um, the belt that actually broke had less than or roughly 60,000 miles. It might have been a little bit more, maybe 64,000 miles before that belt actually broke. When that belt broke, because it's an interference engine, the valves collided with the pistons causing catastrophic damage and basically cost me over $5,000 to fix. I fixed it. It ended up working absolutely perfect. However, my wife and I were looking at each other saying, you know what? I think that is a sign to sell the vehicle. I still think this is probably gonna be on the road for another 10 years. It's probably gonna do fantastic as long as the new owner changes that timing belt, takes care of the transmission fluid and those kinds of things. So here's my overall rating on this vehicle. If you were gonna buy one of these, 
Check the transmission fluid. See if you can get some service records. Did they change that fluid or not? Secondly, when is the last time that timing belt was changed? And where did they change it? Do we feel like it was really changed? Did they use a quality belt? I did not know this at the time, but the factory belts are much higher quality than it looks like the belt that I had put in. I went to a reputable shop. They put in a belt they recommended, but at the same time, when all was said and done, the mechanic who actually fixed it said, hey, this belt wasn't as high of a quality. That's why it went out at a little bit lower mileage than we expected. But again, the long and short is, it was a fantastic vehicle for my family. Family of five or smaller, I think it's a home run grand slam. But again, interference engine and it has a timing belt. So be very smart with that. Also the transmission fluid, make sure that that has been serviced with a drain and fill on those regular maintenance, um, as regular maintenance. And if that's the case and the oil looks clean and you know, of course get it checked out by a mechanic, but those are the kinds of things I would be looking for. Hey friends, I hope you enjoyed this review and I have a tear in my eyes. I've said goodbye to this vehicle. However, I've added on a Toyota Tundra to take its place. So if this video helped you out, hey, give it a thumbs up, give it a like, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.